Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Southern Miss Sports Today with Coach Doc Sadler, presented by Bank Corp South. Golden Eagles are going to be back home this weekend at Reed Green Coliseum. They're just back from a long trip to Charlotte and to Old Dominion, a victory over the Charlotte 49ers a week ago, and then a, a Saturday ball game at Old Dominion. And, Doc, uh, let's talk about that most recent trip for the Golden Eagles and first the Charlotte ball game. Uh, the key to Charlotte was uh, trying to hold John Davis down. He's a guy that's the, probably the best scoring guard in this league. You did that, and it was a good road victory. You win it on the, the last second shot by Tyree Griffin. No question about it. Uh, John Davis is without, uh, without question one of the best guards in this league. And, you know, we've, uh, we've played against him now two or three times, and uh, he's had great games every, every time. But uh, Cortez Edwards, in my opinion, may be the best defender in this league also. So it was a great matchup for us. Uh, we actually held him to 10 points from the field, and then he was able to get uh, 10 for 11 at the free throw line. But uh, I thought it was a great uh, group effort with our with our defense. Once again, we, we were really, really good in the first half with our field goal percentage defense. In the second half, uh, they were able to, to get back over the 50% uh, percent mark, which, you know, that's something that we've got to get corrected. But, at, uh, you know, but the most important thing is once again, our team got down in the second half. Uh, our seniors showed great leadership and confidence, and stuck with what they, uh, you know, with what we do. And uh, and again, uh, after after having the lead at halftime, getting down in the second half, then getting the lead again, and then actually, as you mentioned, to have Tyree to hit a game-winning shot at the buzzer. Uh, was a good feeling after the game. Yeah, that, that had to be uh, the thing you liked the best, as you said. You, you got down after leading at halftime, and uh, all of a sudden the, the atmosphere is in their favor. The, the crowds got into the ball game, but the Eagles were able to just keep doing what they're supposed to do, battle back, took the lead, and then hung on to win. Yeah, it was. Uh, and, and again, I thought it was a great group effort. Uh, defensively, has been pretty consistent, but at the same time, to win the basketball game and only go to the free throw line, I believe, five times was something that was pretty impressive also. So uh, that's something that we've been struggling at uh, is getting there. But the good news, uh, you know, lately uh, is when we do get to the free throw line, we're able to make the free throw. So. Uh, you know, that's uh, that's an improvement, and hopefully that will continue. Then we made the uh, long bus ride up from uh, Charlotte to Norfolk, Virginia, to take on Old Dominion. And uh, I know you've talked all the time about basketball as a game of maybe limiting the possessions that the other guy has in a contest. In that ball game, unfortunately, against Old Dominion, they had about 20-plus uh, offensive rebounds, so a lot of extra opportunities for a good Old Dominion team. Well, we did two things that we haven't done, and that's turned the basketball over 13 times and then allowed 23 offensive rebounds. Uh, they are a big basketball team, but there's no excuse for that, uh, you know, and that's something that they do well. Uh, we actually, I didn't think, uh, you know, our defense was pretty darn good because even with 23 uh, offensive rebounds, we still held them in the 40%. Uh, for the game, and if you would have really taken that away from them, uh, if you'd have taken the, the 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 second shot opportunities and the transition points away, then we would have really had a good defensive game. But uh, and then and then the other thing is, uh, we just did not uh, we did not make the baskets that you got to make on the road, and especially if you're going to give up, you know, in the 70s, you got to be uh, you got to shoot the ball much better than we did in that ball game, and. Therefore, uh, you know, we knew it was going to be a tough ball game, uh, and it was, and Old Dominion's got a good team. But at the same time, I'm not for sure they're 18 points better than we are. And if, if given the opportunity to play them again, uh, we'll be ready, I think. Things uh, happen in ball games. That's just part of the game. Kevin Holland, your, your veteran uh, leader on the ball club, uh, out of the ball game with about four minutes to go before halftime on, a, on kind of a questionable flagrant two technical foul. Well, you know, back in the days, John, when you played, uh, which was way back, way back, <laughs> uh, you know, the coaches taught you to box out with your, uh, with your butt to the thigh, and you know, unfortunately nowadays, uh, you know, that's that's uh, something a technique that if you do, and that particular player jumps, and he comes down hard or whatever, dislodges himself, uh, then they then that is a flagrant two foul, and uh, you know, so. Uh, as 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 the game has changed in a lot of different ways, boxing out has changed also. And uh, 
you know, uh, I thought Kevin did a nice job in old school basketball, but unfortunately in today's game, uh, it was probably the correct call. We're going to uh, take a look in a moment at our features this week, and one of those is a guy that I think's really played some of his best basketball here late, and that's the junior Leonard Harper Baker, the junior college transfer uh, guy that maybe got off to a little bit of a slow start, but really starting to get better and better. I think he had 14 rebounds against Old Dominion. Well, I think more than anything, John, you know, he uh, had the year off last season, and it takes some time. And, uh, you know, he probably played as good as he can play against South Alabama, and we thought maybe that that was going to be the standard that he was going to be playing. Unfortunately, he didn't. But once league has started, he may be the most consistent player that we've got. And uh, more importantly, uh, I mean, he is he's doing all the things that we need him to do to have a chance to win. Not everybody can be a scorer. And if you've got a bunch of guys on the court that think they're going to be scorers and they're not willing to do the dirty work, uh, then you're probably not going to have a good basketball team. Leonard is a guy that can score baskets, uh, but most importantly, he understands that his role is going to be as a defender and a rebounder. And, uh, you know, he's a great piece to the puzzle, that's for sure. Well, that's what happened last week with the uh, Golden Eagles, and Doc's going to rejoin us here in just a bit. We'll talk about what's coming up tonight and this weekend for the Golden Eagles at Reed Green Coliseum. But now sit back and enjoy this week's features. connection with Southern Miss really came about uh, I was at junior college and the assistant coach Steve Shields he was um, actually coaching at Missouri at the time and it just so happened to be down the road so he recruited at my junior college and stuff we never had any talks or anything like that but I'm guessing with his with his change in situation and me graduating it just happened to be a perfect fit he remembered me from junior college and stuff and he was real good friends with uh, one of the assistant coaches from my junior college, so I guess it just went hand to hand with it. You know, uh, just growing up in Detroit, it, it's real tough. Like er everybody likes to play sports. You know, everybody's rugged. Everybody thinks they're the top dog for say growing up or just been around it, around that type of environment and stuff like that. Uh, like basketball, basketball in Detroit is real big. Like we got a lot of legends that come out of Detroit, like George Gervin, Shane Battier, Chris Weber, those guys, Jalen Rose. So it's it's a certain type of culture that that you just I guess just born with playing like that. So and then high school basketball in Detroit is real big. Uh, the PSL, that's public school league, uh, it's real big there. We got a lot of a lot of kids who go Division One, and actually it's a couple of pros that's been in and out throughout the last few years. So. Uh, growing up for me, uh, my favorite sport was actually football. Uh, I always dreamed about being a running back and stuff like that because of Barry Sanders. He was from Detroit, but well, not from Detroit, but played for, for Detroit. So I always looked up to him. That was my dad's favorite running back and stuff like that. So I look forward into playing um, football growing up. I actually played for the, um, it was called the East Side Colts. Well, we was blue and white. Uh, I looked at it like those, the Lions colors too. So I feel real good. Um, as I got older, stuff started happening like just just certain type of weird injuries. Just I broke my arm once when I was in sixth grade. Um, just twisting my ankles, all type of stuff. So I just needed to get away from the more rough contact sport. So I decided to just play basketball. And then as it went on, I just st stuck with it. Really, just got better as time grew on, progressed. Last year sitting out, uh, it, it was kind of tough. It has goods and its bads. The good part was I was able to analyze the game, see the game speed coming from junior college, like what's the different speed of it, how hard you need to play, what needs to be done. And, but um, the bad parts was it was just more of the mental thing. Just, just staying focused um, on and off the court was one of the biggest things, knowing I'm not playing. So I ain't just didn't want to look at it like I'm just out here just working out, practicing for no reason. Like I always, I always had to remember like next season is going to get here faster than I expected. So just prepare myself. For me, basketball is just, it just, it takes me away from everything. Like when you're between them lines, that's all you got to worry about. You don't need to worry about what's going on, thousands of miles away. You just got to worry about that ball in the rim. So. 
It just keeps me in the comfort zone. Something that I like about this basketball team that gets me excited is just the different, just the different experience that we have. Like we got Coach Doc, who's coached at Kansas, been in big games, stuff like that. You got Coach Shields, that's has been a um, Division One NCAA tournament um, head coach. You got Coach Moore, who's coached with the Cavs, Spoon, uh, Coach Weatherspoon, who's been in the NBA himself, and I mean that's that speaks right there. Just the different uh, vibes we have. Like every everyone can contribute. The degree that I'm studying in right now is liberal studies. Actually, um, my degree could uh, turn over to my career later on, but uh, one of the biggest things that I want to do is I want to look into real estate. Um, me and my stepdad, we actually have a, long, a landscaping company. I'm looking to expand that. Like as I get older, just branch it out into an actual more business, a more business side of it, like hiring people and things of that matter. So it's just like real estate and landscaping to be something big for me. The black and gold means to me a lot. Like like walking through the front door, seeing all those people on the wall, it just really excites me to, to have the effort to actually be able to get up on that wall one day. That's one of the excitements for me. And then like seeing Coach Spoon come out here and coach every day, like after he didn't play here, like like guys, they don't really have to do that, but showing that he do it, like that just shows the passion and the, and the love for the game that that this school provided and actually helped him carry over to be successful how he is. I came to Southern Miss because I needed a new atmosphere and I needed like just something, I just needed like a new start, a fresh start. Um, I just needed to fall in love with the game again and just start to have fun with it. And I feel like when I came here, it happened for me. And even though I sat out last year, I feel like it was a year of growth and it just helped me grow as a person and grow as a player. And like I learned some new things about myself, especially coming down here and not knowing anyone. Um, and then just transferring into like playing this year too. It's been different because like Coach McNillis, like she's yelled at me before, but like now she yells at me in a game setting and she expects a lot more of me because like I can play now. So that's the only thing that's pretty much different because I created a bond with my teammates last year. So that bond was still there and now I get to play with them. So it makes everything a lot more fun. I played basketball, but my mom was like, you need to venture out and make sure like that's what you want to do. And I played every outdoor sport you can imagine. I played soccer, I played tennis, I cheered, I ran track. It was just not for me. And then volleyball wasn't for me either, so I stuck with basketball. And I've been playing basketball like uh, consistently since I was about five years old. My dad just kind of put me in the game and I never played anything else after that. I do play point guard, but I also play the two and the three. Um, but I kind of like it though, because I get to stay on the court longer, obviously, because <laughs> because um, it's just like, I just kind of rotate the positions and I have a good time just uh, being able to direct my teammates and help them out. Cause sometimes I even need direction. So I just feel like when you can help somebody else out and they respond good to great to it, then I feel like it just makes you feel good about helping somebody else. Um, we have done a lot of community service projects this year. We did, um, a Habitat for Humanity, uh, one where we went and helped this lady build her house. Um, it was very fun, actually. That was probably, it was really hot outside, but that's probably the one we had the most fun with all year. We went and uh, played with the kids at the Boys and Girls Club, and they probably knocked our heads off with those little dodgeballs. And we we went and read at a lot of schools this year um, and talked to like young girls about bullying and things like that. We just had a, like a good time like uh, and we, when we also do community service projects like we go in different groups so like we bond in different groups like so people that you wouldn't normally hang out with in the team that's who you're usually with. So I feel like we all have a close friendship but when we go do projects like that and it's just like four, four of y'all together then we grow there as well. Um, to be successful consistently, we need to start communicating consistently and we need to start 
uh, I wouldn't say going hard consistently, but uh, competing consistently every single day because that's how we'll make each other better. And that's how we'll have, like the ultimate goal is to win a conference championship, but we also, the ultimate goal is to play hard and grow every game. And I feel like um, if we do that, then the outcome of us having a conference championship will happen like easily if we just grow every single game and practice every practice hard every single game. My major is healthcare marketing um, and I also want to do something like a minor or just take some classes in the IT field because I want to do healthcare information systems when I graduate from college. I like being a role model but I also don't look at it as it being a role model I just kind of look at it as like this is how you need to carry yourself because that's how that's how my mom's always raised me how to carry myself as a young woman so I just feel like as how I, I I honestly just think about it if would my mom be okay with how I'm acting right now so honestly if that's that's if people look up to me and take that as good advice then I mean I guess I'm doing something right Been thinking about it since I was a kid. Mom would be so proud. If I could do it for a living. Using my mom's recipes to open up a cupcake shop. For my daughter to go to vet school. Singing karaoke in all 50 states. Captain in my own shrimp boat. Tell us what you dream about. With the right loan or savings plan, we can make it a reality, no matter how crazy. That's right, thank you. Thank you very much. Keeping you within reach of what matters most. We're Bancorp South, and we're right where you are. Well, got into strength conditioning, you know, I was an athlete in college. I played Division III basketball at Wisconsin Stevens Point. So I'm from Wisconsin originally, grew up in Spring Green, Wisconsin. But, you know, being an athlete, I was always looking for, you know, a way to improve myself and fell in love with the weight room. And, you know, I kind of wanted to give back to athletes because I, I saw a lot of, you know, improvements and success in my game from dedicated time spent in the weight room. Um, so I was actually working at Stevens Point, just, just had finished up my undergrad, and a coach by the name of Abby Sutherland, who used to be at Southern Miss, um, I was actually working with her girls. She was uh, the volleyball coach at UW-Stevens Point, and uh, you know, at that time I was looking for graduate assistantships. One opened at Southern Miss, Abby made a call, and before I knew it, I moved down to Hattiesburg, Mississippi. So I came down in July of 2016, and I've uh, been here ever since. So. It's, it's my first real full-time job in the strength conditioning profession, but I uh, definitely love it. You know, I, I think I really chose the strength conditioning profession because I saw results when I was a player. You know, I, I saw that my game, you know, as a basketball player, and even football, you know, in high school we had a, we had a weightlifting program. It wasn't the best, but, you know, I saw improvements in my body physically. And, I mean, I think sports like basketball and football and obviously other sports can benefit you know, if you're faster, if you're stronger, and I think a lot of that carries up, you're confident up top. So um, I think that was a, definitely a pull that I saw a benefit. And, you know, there's something about, you know, lifting weights. You know, some people just, they enjoy it more than other people. And I wanted to share that passion with the athletes I work with. You know, basketball guys, it, it, it can be difficult to sell them on the importance of the weight room. And I, and I don't know why that is. I think it's just kind of been in the culture. I think back in the early 70s, you know, late 80s, you had coaches who thought that lifting weights would you know, ruin a guy's jump shot because the jump shot, it's such a special art and it's a skill and for some reason that you know, has kind of carried on for years. But it, it's improving. I mean, you, you just have to find ways to show the guys results. You know? You know, we have guys like Tyler Stevenson and Shakir Daniel who've gained 10 to 15 pounds and they, they see it in the mirror. So you know, I think if you can find a way to, to show them results that, hey, you give me 10 to 15 minutes each day in the weight room, um, and you, you see the improvements in the mirror, you know, people are commenting, you know, how you look bigger on the court. I think 
that could be an easy way to sell them. But again, it's, it's not easy. And I talk to coaches all the time and they have the same struggles. For, for some reason, the basketball culture, culture really hasn't bought into the weightlifting side as much as, you know, where football, you know, a sport like football, it's kind of ingrained in from an early age. You know, my relationship with Doc, I think, is, is very strong. Doc, he, he trusts what I do, and, you know, he really doesn't stick his hands in it. But I, I know in some situations, you'll have coaches who, they'll come down and they'll tell you what exercises to do, or, you know, you should be feeding the guys this, or you should be doing this. And, and coaches, he's really hands-off when it comes to us. Um, and, you know, that, that makes my job really easy. You know, I get to do what I've learned and, you know, through my education. So, coach has been, he's been great to work with on that end. You know, if, if you look at the kind of the breakdown of different, you know, workouts and the frequency, you know, if, if we're in a, a summer month of training, obviously the coaches aren't going to have nearly as many hours with those guys on the court. They're usually in a four hour work week where they only get four dedicated hours. So I usually get the other four hours. Um, so, you know, we, we might train three to four days a week um, if we're in the summer months or even the preseason months leading up to the season. But once, you know, late September, early October hits and the coaches get 20 hours, I have to cut back on my end. And I've made this comment before, you can't burn the candle on both ends. So if Coach Sadler and the coaching staff is getting after the guys in the court, I can't be up in the weight room crushing them three to four days a week. So right now when we're in a conference schedule, you know, we're, we have games every Thursday and Saturday, we'll usually get about two good lifts a week. Um, but, but again, that fluctuates too. If a guy's getting 40 minutes twice a week, he might only get one lift, lift a week. Um, you, you just have to find ways to reduce the frequency because uh, the body can only handle so much. You know, if I had to put, pick one thing that makes me the most satif that satisfied that I see, it would definitely have to be the success on the court as well. I'm, I'm just, just like the coaches. I mean, wins are the only thing that really matters. I mean, of course, we like seeing, you know, improvements in the weight room, but th there can be a separation from, you know, increasing the strength in the weight room and, you know, having a good performance on the court. It, it doesn't always work that way. Just because you're a great weightlifter doesn't mean you're going to be a great basketball player. So, um, you know, I'm just like the rest of the coaches. If we're putting wins in the win column, I'm, I'm a pretty happy camper. And we're back on the Southern Miss Sports Today with Coach Doc Sadler, presented by Bank Corp South. And uh, the busy week for the Golden Eagles uh, later tonight. In fact, in just a, a short time, the Golden Eagles will tip it off at Reed Green Coliseum against the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. And then the Marshall Thundering Herd in here for a Saturday afternoon ball game against the Golden Eagles. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But, Doc, uh, our other feature that we uh, saw just a few minutes ago had to do with strength conditioning. Alex Richards is a guy that – uh, handles that for Golden Eagle basketball and he's been around for a couple of years does a really good job interacting with the players and uh, trying to get them bigger and stronger. Well you know that's something that's changed also over the years of strength training and in sports in general and uh, we've been fortunate the, the the five years that I've been here that we've had excellent uh, coaches in that area uh, and Alex is another example of that so uh, you know, he played basketball, Division Three basketball up in Wisconsin, so he has a basketball background. And at the same, same time, uh, he is really knowledgeable and is, is a coach that uh, wants to learn, continues to learn, uh, brings great new ideas. You know, gadgets are things that these kids, you know, like uh, uh, to, 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 to get stronger with. And, you know, it's not just the old bench press or squats or things like that. They want... They want something that, uh, you know, is a little bit trickery, I guess. But he does an excellent job. And one of the things that we've tried to talk to our guys about is, you know, if you're going to be a good college basketball player, it's not so much the strength the reason you get in the weight room, but you better get in the weight room to, to, to deflect injuries. If you get an injury, maybe you'll bounce back that much quicker. All right, the Golden Eagles here in just a bit going to tip it off against uh, Western Kentucky, uh, a team that may be the, one of the more talented teams in the league. They've been kind of up and down, but, uh, boy, any time you face them, they're a good basketball team. Well, there's no question about it. You know, going into the season, I think they were picked unanimously number one in the league. And, you know, they have the one guy that's a legit pro. Uh, he is, you know, probably the only guy in this league that I've seen this year that is a pro as far as the NBA is concerned. Uh, but he is that. 
So anytime you have a player like that protecting your basket, uh, it makes scoring inside difficult. Uh, and as you mentioned, they've had some great wins, and then they've also struggled. One of the things that they're doing that hopefully we'll get a chance to, to have an advantage with is uh, turnovers. They've had a uh, you know, averaging 17, 18 turnovers a game where we're only averaging you know, about nine a game. And the other team that comes in this weekend, the Marshall Thundering Herd, Dan Dan, Tony's Ball Club. And, man, they love to get up and down the court and shoot the three-point shot. Eagles uh, were able to get them a couple of years ago, I guess, here, or maybe last year at Regreen uh, Coliseum. This is a good Marshall Ball Club that is playing probably their best basketball right now. Well, no question about it. Uh, and, and they had a tough uh, preseason schedule just like we did. Uh, but they return a lot of players from a team last year that – you know, won an NCAA tournament game, and uh, uh, they, uh, again, for the, for the style that they play, they play it very well. And it, if you catch them on the wrong night, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a full night's work. Hopefully uh, we'll play the way we did here a couple years ago and, and really defend well and make it difficult for them to score because I think if we can keep the score in the 70s or so, then we'll have a chance to win the ball game. All right, Doc. Thanks as always. Love uh, sitting around talking Golden Eagle basketball with you, and uh, we'll see you next week. Hey, thanks, John. All right. Hey, and don't forget, on Mondays, it's the uh, Golden Eagle Hotline. We've got a brand-new venue here in the Hattiesburg area. If you'd like to come out and be a part of the program, it's walk-ons here in Hattiesburg. So come on by and visit with us, and we'll talk a little Golden Eagle basketball. That'll do it. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next time. Another inside look into Southern Miss basketball. Been thinking about it since I was a kid. Mom would be so proud. If I could do it for a living. Using my mom's recipes to open up a cupcake shop. For my daughter to go to vet school. Singing karaoke in all 50 states. Captain in my own shrimp boat. Tell us what you dream about. With the right loan or savings plan, we can make it a reality, no matter how crazy. That's right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Keeping you within reach of what matters most. We're Bancorp South, and we're right where you are. Hey Southern Miss fans, it's Toby Barker, mayor of Hattiesburg. Mickey Spagnola once wrote, if you're going to war and you get to choose first, choose Southern Mississippi. Always choose Southern Mississippi. Don't fight Southern Mississippi because no matter how hard you fight, those folks will fight harder. His words capture the character of our institution and our city. We here in Hattiesburg are writing a new story, one where we rise to our challenges with great excitement one where we push our city to reach its potential, and most importantly, one where there's real partnership between the University of Southern Mississippi and the city of Hattiesburg. Southern Miss is vital to our city's success, from the quality of life it provides through athletics and the arts to the talent it cultivates in the classroom. We share a common destiny. Hattiesburg is proud to be Mississippi's college city, and we hope as we go forward, you'll join us in supporting our Golden Eagles this season as they go to the top.